Is this being recorded? I don't know. Oh, wait. <laughs> yes, you do. Well, we're assuming that it's working. <laughs> I also want to make a joke about, well, if I'm not recording, the NSA is. <laughs> They're tired of listening to us. You know that. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Ruby, Season 3, Episodes 7 and 8. Oh, villain backstory and things start to get really heavy this season. Not like they haven't been warning us. We saw the intro song multiple times. It's at the beginning of every episode telling us this is not going to end well. Mm-hmm. And the more I listen to it, the more I pick up on lyrics like the innocent and basically pools of their own blood. That's not a good sign. <laughs> so as I said, villain backstory. Woohoo! Well, not all the villains' backstories. We still don't know much about Cinder's backstory, but we got a bit more about Emerald and Mercury. Yes, basically how they ended up with Cinder and a tiny bit of their own backstory. So, okay, Gemini was a thief to start with and Mercury is a trained assassin. Wow, this really sucks. It also sucks that he didn't even really get hurt when Yang punched him in the leg. Well, hopefully we'll be able to fix that in Season 4, because we're not allowed to win in Season 3. So in Season 4, hopefully we can fix him. Oh, uh, yeah, and fix him good. His legs may not be the only things that are broken after Yang gets through with him. <laughs> also, oh wait, yeah, that's the next episode. <laughs> oh, but like, like, that stopped me before. I... <laughs> it usually doesn't. I'm the one who likes to go in sequence. So go ahead, <laughs> run off. <laughs> it was just a quick note about the end of episode 8. You would think Ruby would remember to bring her weapon everywhere even when she's not doing things. Unless the cops outside the room forced her to take her weapon off. But damn it, girl, bring your scythe with you! <laughs> well, yeah, but she's a spectator in the audience. There may be rules against audience members having weapons. But back to the other episode. <laughs> Yes, and those dark moments while Cinder was speaking, it was very disturbing because when my screen goes dark, I can see my reflection. It was like <laughs> looking into the mirror while hearing Cinder talk. You know, Cinder, Ember, kind of similar. <laughs> What's really interesting about those moments where the screen went black is it's a great storytelling method, but it's also a great way to save on animation budget. It's also an excellent way to keep the audience in the dark. Literally. We don't know who Cinder was talking to. Yeah, she talks to a couple different people, mostly Emerald and Mercury. But the last couple of spots where it went dark, she started talking to someone else other than them, which we didn't hear their side of the conversation. We heard Cinder's side of the conversation. We just didn't hear the other person's. And it sounds like she's a little lower down on the total bowl than I thought. I thought she was like maybe top, but most likely second. But this sounds like more like she's third. Yeah, I pretty much figured all along second to third and that Torchwick wasn't even in the running. You know, he fell under Lackey. Mm-hmm. One of the street rats, as it were. Mm-hmm. Uh, though I do want more Torchwick. Uh, tur Torchwick? What is this, Pokemon? Apparently. Well, with the cigar, I guess you could consider him a fire type. <laughs> but I like him. <laughs> I like to dislike him. <laughs> Well, he's just one of those fun villains you, you want to see again, uh, unlike Mercury right now, where I'm like, he's nice and everything, but I kind of want Yang to beat him up, or Ruby to give him some serious stuff, like cut off his legs, then maybe toss him to her sister, go, here, have the rest! You wouldn't hurt an unlegged man, would you? <laughs> mm, yes. Yes, I would. <laughs> okay, and can we talk about the creepy spider thing coming out of Cinder's hand? <laughs> I'm thinking that's some ancient ritual thing that was embedded in that glove, and I'm pretty sure it's most likely a um, brim. Mm-hmm. And if she's literally infested with a brim, that might help explain some of her I want to cause fear mentality. Mm. Or along with that whole line where she goes, I feel empty, and it's nice kind of thing. When she's talking about how she felt like incomplete. Yes, a burning hunger. Like, mm -hmm. oh great, she wants to devour the world. This is going to be fun. 
I, I think it's mostly the the fact that she has an incomplete version of the power. Yes, and points to Amber for seeing through the illusion before she got nailed. Gives us hope for the future. Yes, animation nitpick though. She did not look like she knew how to ride a horse. <laughs> Oh? Even without stirrups, your legs are much more close around the horse's barrel. I can understand skipping stirrups because, you know, animation. And not all riding styles require stirrups. But you need to have your legs in close contact with the horse, especially with a saddle pad like that. Without a high pommel or cantle, how are you staying on? <laughs> the magic of 3D physics. I mean... <laughs> Also, I want Cinder's sword bow. That's a nice combination. I'm assuming it's also a gun. <laughs> well, maybe it's a projectile combined with a melee. So the bow part is the projectile part, but you were going with the, it's also a gun. <laughs> mm -hmm. And also the whole thing with Adam, Blake, White Fang, etc. You know, he does turn them down the first time. Good for him. And that Blake left before Cinder and company came back, which is why she didn't believe that the White Fang could be involved, because she was there when Adam, you know, turned these people down. And Cinder's pitch was basically the same phrasing both times, just the second one had a little more window dressing to it. You know, violence, massacre. I was like, you call that window dressing? <laughs> it's part of the presentation. Presentation is key in a sales pitch. I heard all your men, so do you want to help me now? <laughs> like, well, you refuse to be bought, so now we're going for coercion. I wonder if we're going to get any kind of like, this is going back to Cinder and the structure of the organization she's with. I wonder if we're going to get any kind of like generals or something like that, you know, for other women that this organization has to go after the other, well, Cinder is one of the four, but three other women to go after the other maidens. Entirely possible. All I know is things keep getting interesting and I keep going, this is... no. <laughs> Alright, forward to episode 8? Sure. Okay, how on earth is Yang not locked up? <laughs> you were a very bad girl, go to your room. <laughs> I think it boils down to the fact she hasn't done anything like this ever before. So? So? She's a good girl. She only did this one bad thing, as the general pointed out. And you also tell the general wanted to do more, but I have a feeling Ozpin stepped in. I hope so, because Ozpin knows these girls way better than that. And I really don't like his tone, ever. He just is too confident for the amount of information he knows he has. <laughs> he thinks he knows more than he does. And he falls into that trope of overconfident general that turns out to get everyone killed. <laughs> Oh, and that scene between Blake and Yang in there. I just kept wondering, like, after you apologize, give her a hug! I know, really. And I mean, Blake and Yang are kind of close. Yang was there for Blake when Blake needed help and wouldn't admit she needed help. And Blake, Yang is not Adam. Yeah, but, you know, trust issues. Someone you deeply care about betraying you slowly over time. <laughs> I get that. It just, Blake, you made Yang cry. <laughs> Yang! I didn't know Yang could cry! <laughs> I'm laughing at the way she says it, folks, not the actual thing she's talking about. You know, because Yang crying is actually kind of sad. Yes. Oh, and poor Pira and John. Oh, it's like, what did I say? I know, she's so stressed out. And wow, to hit him with her semblance. Now that hurts. That was a complete accident, you could tell. Yes, but that just shows how rattled she is that she unthinkingly used her semblance. And I think it was her phrasing that made it so he didn't quite get it. She could have said something a little bit clearer along the lines of like, if I do this path that I normally would have no trouble with, I might change who I am. Would I, should I still do it? That way, she can say what's going on without actually saying what's going on. Yes. The thing that John said was that the Pyrrha he knew, well, if she goes through with it, she may not be the Pyrrha he knew anymore. So, John, that's what you said. Well, like I said, he, he probably wouldn't have said that if she would have phrased it a little bit differently. Because then he would have understood that, oh, if she goes through with this, it could mean that she's a different person now. Ah. <laughs> but he didn't quite get that. Even though she mentioned that in the conversation, but because we're talking about John here, you have to be a little mm -hmm. bit clearer. Like a baseball bat to the head. Pretty much, but you know, he was trying. Mm -hmm. 
he got them all out of the room so that Ren and Nora would hopefully stop bothering her. I uh, like Ren's apron. Oh, and speaking of Ren's something else I was thinking of since I need to double check this, but apparently he's based on Mulong, and Mulong was known for hiding something. I'm thinking he's actually hiding that he's not as well as he appears to be, because in several shots he appears to get exhausted very easily. And this is where hanging out with Nora really helps because she is very strong and very energetic so she can unknowingly cover for him. Because anyone looks less energetic compared to her. <laughs> yes. Speaking of, oh my god, Nora. Did, um, here, have some decaf. Something. <laughs> here, here, run around with Pinkie Pie for a while. Maybe you'll lose some energy. <laughs> I know you were trying to help and everything, but geez, Nora, calm down. Well, Nora is Nora, and Ren is Ren, and Jean is Jean, and they're all trying to be supportive in their own way, and none of it's helping because that's the way this type of thing goes. Well, it's very stressful for um Kira, and then the bad guys. Also, wasn't Mercury supposed to, I don't know, stay hidden? Yeah, that doesn't look like staying hidden. I'm thinking that maybe Emerald contacted Mercury? because Emerald saw Ruby see her and recognize that she was there, which, you know, kind of blows the cover a little bit. So, you know, she should have been staying low too, instead of arousing suspicion. I think Emerald's there because Cinder may have told her to be there to maybe put a little bit more stress on Pyrrha during this fight to get her to do something interesting, along with whatever Cinder's planning on doing with Penny. Well, that's the thing. As soon as they announce the matchup, I'm like, they don't have to do anything to Penny. This match, Pyrrha will end up exposing Penny as a robot. The entire crowd will turn against Penny as some sort of soulless thing. And Pyrrha won't know better than to expose her because Penny is Ruby's friend, not Pyrrha's. They've never met, as far as we know. Pyrrha has the complete advantage, and she's going to find that out if they ever physically connect and touch, which Pyrrha will make sure to do because that's how her semblance works. And what could be more disheartening than finding out that this soulless thing has the power of a semblance? Because mm. we've already done the, you know, people hurting each other when they're not supposed to. That was Yang's fight. Mm. I'm thinking it's going to go a little bit differently than that, but we'll see. Only a week away. And a paywall. <laughs> oh, can't blame them for trying to make money. It's not my favorite method. Mm -hmm. But at least they are still offering the shows for free. And I will still buy season three when it comes out. Mm -hmm. And it's just that I don't have the money to pay two ninety nine a month for it. So, <laughs> which is too and bad. And there's like... a subtle plug for Lux's Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I had no intentions of plugging it right there. But if you're interested... <laughs> I wanted to do the whole announcer's voice. Just call this number. <laughs> uh, the link will be at the end of the video, folks. It's also down the um. It's also down in the description if you're interested. It, it, just you know, it's down there. Unless YouTube, some time in the future, puts it above the video for some strange reason, or to the side. It just find the description and it's there's a link in there. <laughs> now back to the episode. <laughs> <laughs> so any more you want to go over on this episode? Because this kind of a lot in here yeah there is and um the hint that ruby gets from velvet that coco also saw things during her match and poor velvet why does she have to be bad at photography and is she really bad at photography you know could could that count as a faunus cheesecake shot i mean she got all of his tail I was actually hoping that she would show her more pictures and show her a picture of Yang's match and, like, capture Emerald doing something off to the side. That would be awesome. Could also come up later because she's been practicing her photography, so there could be an important photo in there. Either of Yang's match or more likely Coco's match. Also, that suddenly reminds me, if you're wearing a... If someone's videotaping for you and they're not underneath... Like they're far away and they're not underneath the um, spell, they would be able to tell you what's going on. Because they wouldn't be affected by that semblance. Only the person in the battle would be. Also, how many people can that semblance influence? 
would it be able to do a group like four people in Ruby's group or would it only be able to do one person at a time? Now, didn't you hear Emerald? She said doing two was a lot harder than one. So I think two is her max. Well, I think there's more like events in a day. Like she uses it more than once in a day. Not that she uses it on more than one people during the day. More than one person, not more than one people. Because she also had to um, temporarily fool the medics as well. Because the medics saw that he had real legs. Not fully, they saw a sliver through the damaged pants, but... Mm -hmm. True, so I may have had the wrong interpretation on her comment. Or she could be referring to Yang and then the two medical personnel. So is there more? <laughs> With as long as this is running? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what'd you think of these two episodes? Couldn't you tell by the length of the discussion, there's a lot going on here. We learned a lot. The presentation of the backstory was nice. Also give us a nice break between the thing with Yang and what's actually going on and then catching up. And then that thing with Mercury, though, I'm still going like, was he told to do that? Is he just doing his own thing? I have a feeling Ruby's going to run off. Uh, Ruby's going to try to run off. Mercury's not going to let her go. Well, here's the thing. I don't think Mercury could catch her even with his weapons. Ruby's semblance is speed. She's like, Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> you can't catch her when she goes. And since she knows what's going on, I have a feeling the next move she's going to do is going to be to get the heck out of there. <laughs> I don't think she's going to be able to do anything about what's going to happen outside and she's going to catch it. And she's going to have to leave and probably hide somewhere because Mercury's going to be after her and he's going to have to hide because he can't go out in the public. So this is where things start to really tumble downhill. There's this little thing called a disguise. That too. Oh well. I really enjoyed both episodes and... Oh, we're counting down the episodes number 9, 10, 11, and 12. Four more episodes, I think. And it's all going to fall down. <laughs> And this has been our thoughts on Ruby, Season 3, Episodes 7 and 8. Thanks for listening. If you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really enjoy listening to us blather on? Try subscribing. Also, comment sections there. Please be nice. Really, really like Lux's art? He does take commissions. And also has a Patreon. All links in the description. Im- not Ember. Mostly uh, Emerald me? and Mercury. Mostly Emerald. Yeah, mostly Ember and Mercury. But. Did the, you? The, no, no, no. You said my name. 